of all recognizing that we're on Treaty 1 territory, the homeland of the Métis Nation. My remarks are, that's about it. I just want to introduce Jamie Kagan, who's an attorney with DDS Law. He's going to kick things off and then he'll let Chief Hudson speak to you. And uh, once those remarks are con concluded, uh, you're free to ask, uh, ask any questions you might have. All right, Jamie? Sure. Um, so what we filed in court now is both a uh, claim and a motion for an injunction to stop the Central Hockey League from operating, which we believe is unlawful. The matter is before the courts now, and we're not going to comment on the merits of the litigation today. But we did uh, appear to this week in court. It was filed. We have a contested hearing date uh, on December 19th. To provide you with some context, this matter has been going on, at least to our knowledge, since September. We've tried repeatedly to reach an accommodation with the Central League to have these northern teams continue on in the activities that are important to their community. Every overture that we've made with respect to settlement, with respect to Hockey Manitoba, or the Central League has been rejected to the point where they refuse to meet with us. Nobody is particularly happy or thrilled to be involved in litigation relating to Junior B Hockey. This is something that's important to rural Manitoba and is done by these, these teams and these First Nations as a last resort to preserve a big part of their culture and heritage. Um, we hope that the court will be able to decide the matter very close to the 19th and provide an effective remedy for this year for the league to continue as it has, especially for the Pegasus First Nation who is the reigning three-time champion of the league. Unless you have any legal questions, I'll turn it over now to Chief Hudson. I just first of all want to welcome everybody here uh, this morning. Um, in this decision uh, that we've made to step up and take uh, uh, court action, legal action against the uh, Capital Region Junior Hockey League, uh, there was arguments put forward on why uh, they should um, create a new league. Obviously we have uh, northern communities comprised of the First Nations the far north and in the central area of, of Manitoba, the rural area, um, and most of the other communities um, that formed the new league are central and south. But when you go uh, to look at the uh, arguments as far as location are concerned and having to travel uh, to the north, um, Peguis is only 30 minutes away from Arbor. It's only 40 minutes away from Lundar. And uh, those teams have to travel two hours to St. Malo, and yet we're only 30, 40 minutes away. So that location, uh, reasoning, and excuse is not acceptable. The other thing being uh, that the travel costs to a lot of our First Nation communities in terms of participating in the league. We paid the, the South teams travel expenses fully to travel to our communities to play. So the expenses, of, as far as being too costly, are irrelevant. That's, that's, not, that's not a logical uh, reasoning in terms of um, why they pulled out of the league, uh, the KJHL. <clears throat> I believe, you know, in, in the uh, teams and how the two leagues are structured now, you have a First Nation base, all the teams are First Nations in the KJHL, in the Capital Region League, they're all non-First Nations. They're all white communities. And that's something we, we need to address as society. As Indigenous people, we've been accepted of any society, any race, creed, or color. And uh, that's what forms this country of Canada. We have to eliminate race-based decision-making at all levels, especially in sport. Especially in sport. You know, and, and that's the basis of why we want to look at, at challenging uh, that new league. We have to have community involvement. We want to be able to have hockey in our communities. Our young kids here grow up to aspire to be the best they can be in sports, and especially hockey. Canada's game, on our home and native land, these kind of decisions need to be eliminated. And uh, that's something we feel very much um, I think the, the lines were crossed and, and, and certainly these things need to be changed. 
as far as the Truth and Reconciliation Commission is concerned, if you look at point 89 of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, on what it states, it's about involvement. It's about involvement of Indigenous people in sport and equal participation, access to sport. Because we have a lot of uh, issues in our communities as far as our youth are concerned. They want to be able to get up Saturday morning, look forward to going to play hockey. And that's something we, we support as parents, as grandparents, and as a community overall. It, it's healthy. It's healthy for our, our kids to participate. And that's something that, you know, we need to, we need to change as far as, you know, the league itself is concerned. We want to bring our league back together, the KJHL. It was done inappropriately, that separation and the teams on how they've been divided now. And we want to change that. We want everybody to be winners. Even those, they have an opportunity to play in this league and to be champions also. And the only way to do that is to bring our league back together, bring those teams back together, and let's move forward. We'll all be winners that way. So with that, that's my statement. Can you give us a sense of how many players are left on the northern teams? Because I understand a lot of the players went to some of the teams in the south now. Well, um, Hockey Manitoba had uh, made a decision to that there was um, uh, going to be a cost to release players. And that cost hasn't been uh, paid, hasn't been followed up. So they were illegally just taking our players from our teams. So and, and the number itself, I would say, is probably on the order of 20. I, I don't know the total number, but I know from our team alone, there was at least four players that were uh, plucked by the, uh, the Southern teams. So you have about 20 players left? In our, in our, our in teams. teams. Yeah, we have, uh, I think right now we have red shoes 17 or so. How about the other uh, northern communities? Do you know number I, wise? I don't know the numbers there. In the past, I know that there have been like brawls between teams that have been, um, you know, uh, insults and so forth hurled between teams. Is it uh, not perhaps uh, better then to separate if there's problems to say, hey, try and keep the two uh, apart? Well, let's look at uh, junior hockey as, as a whole. Canada and Russia brawled back uh, a few years back. They still want to play together, even though there was brawls that occurred between them. It's no different in our community. You leave it on the ice, right? And, and that's something that um, we certainly endorse. It's a game. Sometimes it can get rough, like you have brawls, but that's all part of the sport. Do you believe this league could actually come back together after this? And, well, and that's something, this? that's why we had wanted to call this press conference, to make that statement. We want our league back together. We want those teams to play against one another. When you have a large league like that and a large <coughs> player base, you're going to have the best players possible. And just to uh, like give the example, you know, we had uh, players that are playing in the NHL that played in, played in this junior league. Darren Helm out of St. Andrews played in this league way back when. There's a few players that have played at the NHL level now that played in the Junior B ranks. And Pegasus has been in the league for 30 plus years. And now they, we, they wouldn't sit with us. They wouldn't answer our questions. Why? Can you Legally say, speaking, are you saying uh, and alleging that men, you know, Hockey Manitoba doesn't have the right to form like a new league? Uh, Sorry, can you go on mic if you don't mind? Sure. If, if you look at the affidavits and the claim itself, what's, what I think Hockey Manitoba found is that there was not appropriate notice given to separate the two leagues, and then Hockey Manitoba exercised its discretion to provide some penalties that weren't provided for necessarily in the Constitution. Look, if, if you want to leave the league, you have to at least comply with the league rules. And there's league rules with respect to notice and consultation that weren't met, and those are going to be part of the court's decision. Um, and just to address your question earlier, having two separate camps isn't what hockey is about. It's about coming together and addressing them. There's players from Winnipeg that go up and play in Peguis, 
and they hang out with the kids in their room and they meet them and they realize that they have a lot more in common than what the media or others might say they have in common. They want to play the game. And one of the things that you don't see is people from Winnipeg voluntarily going up to these northern communities just to see what it is. And you've got kids who want to chase a dream and they're prepared to go up north for an opportunity to play. They're prepared to go up north, sit in a dressing room with people they've never met before to chase their dream. And what comes out of that is they realize that those people are a lot like them. They just want to chase their dreams in their way. And to have it taken away and marginalized and regionalized is not what we're, we ever want to see. This is supposed to be about inclusion, not exclusion. Is there any kind of like precedence and cross court that will actually let this, like let you have a leg to stand on? Like how is this going to work? Uh, there's a lengthy motions brief that's been filed in court. My associate, Alyssa Mariani, dug up about 14 different cases. Uh, if, if you want, you can get a copy of the motions brief. I can't argue the case today and I don't intend to, right? That's for December 19th. But there are numerous authorities that speak to having to follow a constitution if that's what you voluntarily agree to. The Constitution wasn't complied with in our view. Hockey Manitoba agreed with us that the Constitution wasn't filed, followed um, and they, they made a decision to provide certain remedies. We're not accepting those remedies because those remedies allow these kids to be marginalized and that's not acceptable to us. You mentioned accommodation. You, you sort of negotiated, I think it was you, Jamie, you mentioned that in the opening comments. Sure. Sure. What kind of accommodations did you throw out there to try to get, try, try to break this, uh, or try to keep this league together? Sure. Um, the first thing when it came up, um, lawyers are very expensive. And these types of matters are very expensive. So the first thing we did is say, look, if there's a monetary issue that needs to be addressed, we would rather the money go into the leagues and the kids and junior B hockey than into lawyers. So if the legal things are legal proceedings are going to cost thirty thousand dollars, let's make that available to these teams. If you want to have a different schedule, let's look at that. If there's issues with respect to player recruitment, let's have a conversation. The email I got back is the inclusion or return of the First Nations is not negotiable. Who was that, that from? That was from the Central League Chairman. So if this is really about issues, let's get in a room and work out issues. If it's time for Hockey Canada to take a leadership position. This is about hockey. Get in a room, let's deal with the issues. If it's about money, we're prepared to put money behind our children to have them included in the organizations. If it's about a schedule, we can amend the schedule. If it's about timing, let's talk about timing. But right now, all we have is you're not allowed, you're not welcome, and that's not acceptable to Chief Hudson and the other First Nations. How would you adjust the schedule or kind of, you know, can you kind of give any kind of detail or idea on what you would do? Sure. Uh, again, sorry, Chief. <laughs> um, I have some knowledge of running hockey leagues and spring hockey leagues. You can go to unbalanced schedules, for example, so the southern teams are allowed to stay in the south more often. Uh, you can have them, you know, the NFL, AFL combination where they play in their own leagues and then come together for playoffs and national champions. There's a whole bunch of ways. If this is about issues and barriers, you can overcome them. If this is about what it appears to be about, then you have no ability to negotiate. And currently, we've never had an ability to negotiate. Thank you. Chief, can you just give us a little bit of context about the league and where things stand right now? Like, are games being played or...? <coughs> Well, the current uh, KJHL league, they're, they've started to play uh, last week, weekend. And uh, the reason being is because we haven't been given any answers from the teams in the south, as Jamie indicated. We did offer to pay an additional fee on top of all their expenses to be able to travel in the north because that was one of the reasons they gave that was too costly. And uh, they never accepted it. So the, the teams in the north are playing each other right now? Yes, it started last week. And yeah, we'll continue over the yes. next few months. And yeah. then you're hoping to get this resolved and play against the South. Coast. Yes, that's right. You kind of touched on it, but I'll ask you just because this is one concern I heard from a parent. Um, they're saying they don't want their kids on the road on a bus after a humble. Can you just respond to that? Well, I think uh, that's a concern to every parent across this country, even to us as First Nations. But, uh, you know, if, if that's the reasoning of uh, this separation and segregation of our teams, why isn't it happening in Saskatchewan where they travel north to south? Why isn't it happening in BC and Alberta? Uh, they travel uh, throughout the entire province, north to south, and the reason being is uh, because they want to play the game. They want to play the sport. And uh, it's unfortunate about 
what has happened at Humboldt, but we have to travel also. So does that mean we, we stop altogether? No, it doesn't. It means we continue on and uh, we want to have inclusion of, and the best hockey uh, in, in one league. And uh, this is the solution to it, is to bring our league back together. Are you saying the parents' concerns are not valid? They are valid. And we have those concerns also. Our teams have to travel uh, north to Norway House, OCN, Cross Lake also. So if we put that forward as an argument, do we stop hockey? No, we can't. The young kids look forward to the game. I think you said earlier that um, you kind of disregarded the argument about costs and stuff like that for teams. The MJHL Junior A has been bleeding money for several seasons now. Um, and they've gone to a pay-to-play model. I, I, I understand that uh, Junior B is a pay-to-play model as well. Uh, kids have to pay. Um, so when you factor all that in, I mean, rejoining the league or having to pay all these travel costs back and forth for teams in the south and north, doesn't that put teams and, and a lot of players in jeopardy if they just can't pay enough or, or, or have the funds to, well, I to think support a team? Yeah, I, th I think as far as our, our communities are concerned, Obviously, the cost of uh, our children participating, our cost of the children playing the sport, far outweighs, you know, in terms of those costs, the, the real costs. We're willing to put those costs forward because uh, that's part of their growth, that's part of their, their dreams and aspirations to be the best players that they can be, the best sport uh, in, in, in terms of playing hockey overall. And so, we're willing to put money forward for that as a community. In the press release, you talk about racial tensions. Do you think that's the sole reason for this? Well, you just look at the composition of the, the league. Now, the capital region, it's all non-First Nations. And the North is all First Nations. Why is it, why is it separated that way? Pegasus, as I indicated, is only 40 minutes from Lundar, 30 minutes from Arbor. They only travel that, that that distance, but now they're traveling two hours to another community, which is a non-First Nation. To me, that's that's not a, a logistical argument, a reasonable argument. I understand you you guys win every year. Maybe that's why uh, maybe that's a factor. Maybe you have to uh, let other teams win. So that is when the when the uh, Edmonton Oilers or uh, the New York Islanders win every year, does teams pull out there? And they don't. <laughs> it's all part of the game. Chief Hudson, uh, you said that uh, you're not too far from other communities that are in this league. Uh, what if they came back to you and they said, okay, fine, Pegasus is not that much of a cost to travel, but we still can't do a pass vehicle or a cross lake. What, how, how would you take that? Well, I think uh, um, I certainly want to be supportive uh, of those options. Uh, I also want to be supportive of our, our First Nation teams in the north. When you have a decision that has been made based on a split of non-First Nations versus First Nations, I got to continue to support both in terms of having our our First Nation teams continue to participate. You know, each and every kid in, in our First Nation communities want to play, and I guess as far as a decision uh, that hasn't been put forward to us at all. I'd like to introduce. Uh, Chief Anderson, uh, Norway House. Yeah, for sure. Um, maybe we'll start by answering the question about Peg was winning every year. <laughs> <laughs> so now what we want to do? Competition, right? We want to beat the best. And Norway House will beat Peg was one day. Um, and so we support um, the league in, in all teams. Uh, you know, uh, I don't know a lot about the, the league and the process. I don't see um, But we've expensed millions of dollars to keep Norway House in the league. You know, from what I understand, we're paying southern teams to come and play our boys in our in our barn. And that's the reality of First Nations in this province. You know, we, we pay a lot. We give a lot and get a little. Um, you know, we're not going to uh, take it anymore. We get BLT revenues, right, from the province. Uh, and and in, in those arrangements, we are allowed to spend that money on youth programming. 
And if you use programming in means playing hockey south of our communities, uh, you know, west of our communities, and costing X dollars, you know, we feel that as First Nation people, we want to become the best. And we will do whatever it takes to make that happen ourselves. The days of relying on non-First Nation entities and organizations is gone. I mean, I lived in a city just recently. Nobody knew what the heck, where the, where the heck is Norma Hills? Who is Norma Hills? Who is, who is Cross Lake? You know, the city is in a dome of its own. Uh, and, those that, and those that live here don't look past the perimeter. The media is old. Of course, it's a different. Um, you look for news, right? So here's, here's, here's the news. You have First Nation people being marginalized, being pushed aside. First Nations decided, no, we're not going to allow that to happen anymore. We're going to stand up to it. We've got revenues. We generate our own in-house in or in-source revenues. We hire. We can hire the best lawyers in the province. And that's what this is going to be about, is to stand up for our communities and our boys. You said there uh, earlier um, that you're potentially paying southern teams to come up? We do pay them. So does that not just speak more to the unviableness of of the, the current system working? I mean, if you have to pay southern teams to come up to play in OCN or wherever north, does that not just <clears throat> further the point that it is perhaps too expensive for some of these teams to make it up? For them, probably, uh, because they're, but they're not paying, so it's not more expensive for them. Right, but do you guys want to keep paying Southern teams to come up and, and play? If it means having a good league, if it means having good competition, if it means having our our youth play in the league that gives them the challenge to ultimately make it to the top. I mean, we want our we want our players, we want our people to play in the NHL. Is there anything wrong with that? Even if it costs us money, with our youth. That's our that's the reality we live in. Did you lose players from your team that they coached as well, or? I'm not <laughs> sure, I'll have to get back to you. And my other question is, uh, I know a few years ago there was a big story kind of about the racism that players were facing on the ice. Is that something that's still happening? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I uh, coached uh, our senior team there, there's racial slurs that are uh, that are being thrown up there at our players, um, but again, you know, it's a competition. Uh, it should it shouldn't happen. It, it shouldn't be tolerable, but it does occur. And uh, you know, you can ask even the uh, Philadelphia Flyers. They, they have a black player on their team, and even at the highest elite level in the NHL. Those racial taunts happen, but we look past that. We need to encourage our youth uh, to continue to develop, continue to grow, and, and be the best you can be, regardless of what you're faced with. And, and today, that's that's what this is about. It's about bringing our teams back together, uh, whether they're First Nations, non-First Nation, black or yellow or whatever color creed. It, it's about playing the sport of hockey giving our children a chance to enjoy that sport. Uh, I think that's good. Thank you very much. Um, if you do need anything else, please uh, let us know. Either myself or Angie at the back, and uh, we'll be happy to help you out. Thank you for coming out.